So you don't really care about my academic credentials. I, first job I had, a professional job, was here in Calgary. Uh, I've been a mortgage broker, I an agent 915 in the province of British Columbia. I wrote all of the mathematics in the salesperson's agents and mortgage brokers course for the province of Alberta. So I can absolutely drive you nuts with mortgage calculations. So I've worked in the industry, um, wrote a lot of educational material for industry and uh, enjoy an, a long, long association with the industry since 1968, which for many of you was about the same time as fire was invented. So thank you for your, uh, your attendance today. Yes, I talk way too much, but I find myself a fascinating person. <laughs> So if you feel the need to leave before I finish, that's okay. I've raised children and grandchildren and I'm actually used to people leaving while I'm talking. Um, I am from Alberta, I'm from Red Deer, Alberta, and so as many of you will appreciate, the jacket's coming off. Okay. In Alberta, you only keep your jacket off when you're pleading not guilty. Okay, so, um, channel changer. See if we have any of the technology. Yesterday we had computers shutting off. We had microphone batteries dying. We had the Canucks forgetting to play. <laughs> so hopefully today will go better. So what I'm going to talk about is your home in the future. I'm addressing it not simply to you and your home, but in many senses the focus of, of my talk to you guys I can't type that fast, guys. I really can't, you know. I'm, I've, I've, got a, I've got an iPhone and I have to turn it sideways just to see the numbers. And I am the only person who has a rest for my iPhone so I can get it up there where I can focus on it. Um, so you never want to be sitting actually in the seat in front of me on a plane. So your home in the future. So I'm going to be talking about the communities you're involved in. I'm going to be talking about what's happening to those communities to give you a basis for, for building not your jobs, but your careers. I'm taking a look at where these communities are going, what factors are going to shape them. What I've been asked to do is to give you not a lecture, but a narrative and an explanation, and to present information and, and issues to be pondered. The issue here is we are all searching for the answer. When I grew up in Alberta, the answer was rye and seven, <laughs> okay? So we're always out there looking for the one thing and the one person who will tell us what we have to know. They do not exist. If you find a person who says, here's the one thing you must know to be successful, walk away. Remember what they said, because that will be part of the answer, but it will not be the whole answer. One of People used to, to go around saying, you know, demographics explains everything. And then Greek def Greece defaults on its loans. Now, where does that got to do with demographics? Or Al-Qaeda arrives. Uh, China expands. All of this stuff's supposed to be outside of demographics. Yet these are the forces that drive change. So don't look for an answer. Look for the answers, number one. Number two, it's your life, it's your job, it's not mine. I can tell you right now, do not model your life on mine. You know, I'm, I'm 35 years old. <laughs> I've had a hard life. So the other thing is what I'm going to present to you is an enormous amount of information which will provide a, a narrative of the communities you're working in. Look at these things and say, how does that relate to what I aspire to do, what I want to do, what I'm going to do? The books in the airport that sell for $19 that tell you how to be successful are worth $19. Price of a bottle of wine. Useful to read because otherwise you have to watch that little screen on the back of the airplane seat. But the reality is the world is complex, there are complex forces and your success will come from your ability to look at this very, very complex world and figure out how you play in it. So that's what I want to talk about today. And for a nominal fee, I will give you the answer. 
I'm going to start with big, long-run strategic issues, the demographics, the economics, these big, high-level forces, and then by the end of the presentation, I'm going to look down to demand for housing in Calgary, how many more houses you're going to have, how many more owners you're going to have, what's going to happen to prices in Calgary, those sorts of things. So a broad to general analysis. I'm going to start out with demographics, looking at population matters, and I'm going to start with the Canadian context. Now, it sort of seems that's distant from the Calgary housing market. Why are we starting with? But the, the reason for starting is the majority of the people in Alberta aren't from Alberta. So if you're going to understand what's happening demographically in Alberta, you have to understand what's happening in the rest of the country and ultimately you have to understand what's happening globally. So I'm starting with this, uh, under half of the adult population uh, in, uh, in Alberta was born in Alberta, the rest born in Alberta. So I'm going to start with the Canadian context and I'm going to start with the baby boom. And as an introduction to the discussion of the baby boom, if somebody ever says to you, the baby boom is going to do this, walk away. <laughs> because there is no such thing as a baby boom in terms of a personality. Maybe an absence of personality, but certainly not a personality. So I'm going to talk about the baby boom and baby boom demographics, but more again to tell you where you should be looking than to give you any answers that come from demographics. So what do we mean by the baby boom? Well, if we take a look at births in Canada, we see that between 1945 and uh, 1959, 20% increase in the number of births. So we have this bulge in, in, in our population, and so we've come to call the people born in this period a baby boom generation. And so if we take a look at this, notice on the chart though, that in fact the births turned up before the baby boom began. The number of births in Canada started to increase in 1939, the beginning of the Second World War, when Canada urbanized, industrialized, moved to cities, that's where we began to see the, the growth in births in 1939. And so we look at this and we say, okay, do birth dates tell us much about people? So somebody says we've got a, a baby boomer marketing strategy. What would you think if somebody said they had a Sagittarius marketing strategy? <laughs> would you really think that was sound science? Now the fact that Sagittarians are intelligent, thoughtful, good-looking, and wise still doesn't really give you the basis of using birthdays as a business plan. And yet that's what we do when we talk about the baby boom. So my issue is this, if you're doing any reading about seniors generation, you talk about the baby boom generation born 46 to 65 and the silent generation that was born 1926 to 1945. And so these people born before 1944 have become called the silent generation. So think of your image of this generation of these quiet, meek people kind of walking around never raising. Mick Jagger, part of the silent generation? Give me a break. So these people were born in 41, 1943, and yet they're, quote, part of the silent generation. So birth dates don't really tell us much about these guys. Drugs may tell us about these guys, but not birth dates. So what we look at and realize is the transformation wasn't the births. It was the change that happened in Canada, United States, uh, during the war period, when city we became industrial countries, urbanized, we had high levels of mobility, and it created a cultural environment that was different than the pre-war era. There was a show last year at the, um, no, this year I should say, uh, at the uh, National Portrait Gallery in England, uh, Mick Jagger's Portraits, and it was brilliantly titled. It was titled Young in the 60s. So if you want an image of what the baby boomers are, it's not about birthdays. It's about people who were young in the 60s. My brother, who was born a year before me, was never young. Okay. <laughs> so he's not a baby boomer because he wasn't young in the 60s. Why this is important to us is it means we have an ability to look at what people who were born during the war and who are now in 65 to 72 years of age and get some anticipation of what the rest of us might be doing as we age and it is not what previous generations did when they reached the age 65. 
So what we can use as role models for aging is looking at what people who were young in the 60s were doing as they're aging. And I must say it's, it's not necessarily a pretty picture. But nevertheless, they're not leaving the workforce. They're not moving to small towns. There's a whole image there of what people who were young in the 60s did. So that's discussion number one about the baby boom. Discussion number two, the peak of the baby boom, 1959. So if we want to know exactly who the typical baby boomer is, it's got to be somebody who was born in 1959. And so we look and see who was born in 1959, and there's Brian Adams. And we go, yeah, you know, that pretty well, you know, just Google what baby boomers are like. They're disrespectful of authority. They have very, very tolerant of wide cultural and sexual orientations. They're not particularly interested in the military, military services. You know, this is the flower generation. So that's a pretty good description of people born in 1959. 